music. You get jazz and rock and roll and heavy metal and hip hop and, and dance and trance and lance and prance. I made the last two up to see if you were listening. Now, you also get people who are just out there on their own. People like maybe Aretha Franklin, Say a Little Prayer, or Jimi Hendrix, or Michael Jackson, what is he, dance or pop? You don't have to like them, but you recognize that they're out on their own doing their own thing and that you can't mistake them for anybody else. Now, Joseph Turner was like an artistic movement of one person. There's no name for this movement, but the way he was concerned with painting atmosphere and light and motion is quite different to the way anyone else is doing it. And you might say that's what all painters are interested in, which is true to some extent. But when Turner was painting light, he wasn't painting light what it looked like when it hit somebody or something. He was painting what light looked like in itself. And when he was painting movement, he wasn't painting a snapshot of frozen action, but what action looked like itself. And in this painting that we're talking about, he's painting rain and steam and speed. And not what they look like on something or when they pass by something, but actually what they look like in themselves. And I'm thinking that's a pretty difficult thing to do. And you might not like what his try looks like, but maybe he was pretty great for trying. I'm going to tell you another reason why the painting is great. You're going to have to work with me here. I'm going to have to reel you in and rewind it back to 1844. Joseph Turner's just finished his painting and he's a successful painter and it's all good and he's shown it to his friends in his little studio in his room. And they look at him. Joseph, mate, what is this blurry mess? What are you doing? We know you can paint a train. Do it, do it again, and this time no drinking on the job. Well, he's undeterred, and he goes away, Joseph, and he exhibits it, and he's working for rich, rich, rich people. And they probably already look down the noses at him a little bit, and you can just see them, they see this blurry painting, and they say, ridiculous, the man's lost the plot. And then he goes home, and maybe people in the street are looking at him like, loser, my five-year-old can do better than that. And he goes home and cries. Well, it might not have been quite that bad, but can you see why I'm about to tell you that he was brave? What do you think you would have thought of a guy who showed a painting like that in 1851? It was crazy and outrageous. Oh, he was uh, a fraud. <laughs> so, would you would you agree that he might have been quite brave to show it there? Yeah. If he was saying and not critical, that it would be the first kind of. Really? Oh. So how do you think people would have reacted to that? Uh, I don't. I don't think like they wouldn't be amazed because it doesn't really look like. They'd be quite annoyed. No. Yeah, they'd be quite annoyed. Like he doesn't like care what other people think. He wants to show his talents as well, like different styles of what he can do. Very brave. Mm. Now, it may be a bit corny to talk about it here, but there's a modern hero, Muhammad Ali, who said, I don't have to be what you want me to be, and probably in a different accent. And maybe in this painting, Turner is saying something just the same. It's a work of integrity, and there's not a lot of that about integrity. And if you don't think it's a big deal not to care what people think, then um, tell me why it is that tomorrow you don't go to work or to school wearing some bright orange flares or a fetching mustard tank top. And tell me why it is that when kids are drawing a, or painting, they take it home proud as hell from school and they stick it on the fridge underneath the alphabet magnets. And all of a sudden they reach an age like 11 or 10 or 13 and they start becoming all shy and embarrassed about it. Tell me why that is if we don't care what people think. Now, I don't want you to like the painting, you don't have to like it. But what, what I want you to understand and appreciate and acknowledge is that the man was brave. Before he painted Rain, Steam and Speed, Joseph Turner took a trip on the Great Western Railway Line which runs from London to Bristol to Cornwall, so he may have travelled on it. And he did this because he was concerned with making his painting authentic. He wanted it to be as realistic as possible. And the story goes that he was so concerned with that that he stuck his head out the window, filling his face with all the steam and the rain of the journey and all the smells and the sounds of it. And there was a lady watching him and she didn't know what he was up to. And she opened her window and stuck her head out the window like a dog in a car. 
and copied him. And later on, when his painting was exhibited, a critic said about the painting, whoever saw such a conglomeration, which means like, what a mess, what's he doing? And that lady was there at the exhibition and she was able to pipe up, I did. As well as being praised and ridiculed, Turner's paintings provoked others to change the way they thought about painting. And the Impressionists followed on from him by focusing on the effects of light rather than on painting more solid things. So for example, if they were going to paint a tree, they'd probably be more interested in the way the light shone through the leaves and branches rather than showing you exactly what every little branch or strange leaf looked like in itself. Now that was a similar way of looking to the way that Turner used painting rain, steam and speed. And Monet, who was probably the, most, the ultimate impressionist in, in that most of his work was painted outdoors and concerned with painting light, he went as far as to echo Turner with a series of paintings of steam engines in the Paris station Gare Saint-Lazare, or Station Saint-Lazarus. And his paintings are certainly very atmospheric, but one thing they might lack is the light and movement of Turner's. Turner died. He left everything in his studio to the British public, which means he left his brushes, his palettes, and all his paintings to you. And I bet you've never even been to look at one of them. Come on, get off your fat bum. Because when you go and look at paintings, and not just Turner's paintings, it's like time travel. What do you mean it's not like time travel? It's the closest thing you're going to get to time travel today. Because when you stand next to those paintings, you stand next to them like the artist did, painting it in 1844. And the his bones may have rotted away to dust by now. There may be nothing left of him at all. But his painting stays there unchanged, in much the same way as it did when he first hung it on a wall and walked out of a gallery in 1844, waiting for you to come and look at it.